Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Amazing Spider-Man, Man-Thing, one-shot, kind of. The next one is going to be X-Men, one-shot. Um, I really don't like it when you put the thing that changes on top and the thing that stays the same on the bottom, because now I can't look it up, by, or the next person can't necessarily look it up by Man-Thing, the, the curse of the Man-Thing. They have to look up the, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a weird thing. Don't, don't do stuff like that. That's just goofy. Anyway, they don't care. They just want to sell it in the form of a trade paperback. But it is what it is. Uh, I had a couple problems with this book, but most of it was because of stemming from one problem. Otherwise, I actually really enjoyed this a lot. Let's get to know who made this comic book. We'll go on from there. Spider-Man, Curse of the Man-Thing. Uh, got a dumb title. The writer is Steve Orlando, and Marco Fela with Ming-Ku Jung does the art. Why is that one so small? Girl Effects does the colors, and VC's Clayton Cowles does the letters. Cover art by Daniel Acuna. And there's a variant cover out there, too. Another variant cover also, and, and a page artist, and yeah, stuff like that. Dude, too much stuff. Spider-Man was created by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. Okay, um, this, I think, is coming from the Avengers series. That's Jason Aaron's Avengers theory, series. I really dislike, I strongly dislike, if one thing was going to get me to stop reading comic books, it's basically Jason Aaron, this guy just coming up and blah, just, just puking all over comic books and saying, look, isn't it cool? And no, <laughs> no, it's not. This comic book's main mistake is not saying that this is actually a part of something. What this is chapter four. Like, where were the other parts of this? Holy crap, was there actually three of these beforehand? Three Curse of the Man things beforehand? Uh, man thing? And, and I just didn't know what they were? Because, you know, they put somebody else's title on top? My god, man. Stupid, stupid freaking ways to put these books together. Anyway, I think this comes from, because I see the Avengers in here and Captain America is inside talking to this thing. Was the previous one Avengers man thing? Anyway, so Cap gets booted from talking to Ted Salas, and then he talks to the lizard and says that the lizard actually created the the SO2 formula, which made Man-Thing into Man-Thing, made Ted Salas into Man-Thing. But then he turns around and he's like, okay, well, okay, it wasn't actually you, but, you know, when he's talking to him, because there's teleporting in here. I know it sounds weird, but it's like there's a fight going on, and Captain America comes out, and the only person next to him is... Miles Morales. Miles Morales doesn't know how to get a hold of freaking Lizard. Peter Parker does. Well, Peter Parker's in this book, too. But he, Captain America has a superpower saying, I need to talk to so-and-so. And then magically, he just appears, and he's, and he's already given the whole story. Meanwhile, there's a fight going outside, and apparently nothing's gotten anywhere with this fight. <laughs> Spider webs are able to stuff. I don't, I don't know what's going on, man. I really don't. And it's not like they gave a brief overview of the books that I need to read before. This came out, so I don't even know where to go to, to find it out, because, newsflash, I would, if they're available on the Marvel Unlimited app, I'm there in a heartbeat, bruh. Anyway, so it goes on to have Lizard say, why'd you lie? Well, I didn't lie, but I, I lied. Anyway, don't stop calling my lies lies. It's not fair. It's not nice. So then he, Liz, he turns to the Lizard, he's like, ah, I can't trust you. You're a monster just like me. And he comes out and he starts doing electric bites on people, which I guess that would make him Miles Morales' best friends, because, you know, spider bite, lizard bite. Hey! So then Spider-Man, Peter Parker himself, goes in, and apparently these two know each other pretty well, and they're talking. <laughs> oh my god. A guy who just, Ted Salas, who says, I've lost all track of time, tells Spider-Man, hey, I'm older than you. How would you know? <laughs> How would you know I didn't see a watch on your wrist? I, I look, Let me double check. I, I just want to make absolutely sure. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking right now. Nope, no watch on his wrist. Even if he had a watch on his wrist, I don't know where the battery would go. Because that's just a really weird thing. No, sorry, I'm not buying it. I'm simply not buying it. Home Slice would not know that he's older than Peter Parker. It makes zero sense. But hey, that's just me. So eventually he realizes that he's got it because he's talking to Spider-Man. And this was actually cool. I like this. He gives the assertive dad speech and says, you need to take control of yourself and stop just 
being upset over things. Yes, pretty much that's the way it is. You made a mistake, so what are you going to do with this mistake? Okay, let's go. Let's move forward. Ted becomes the man thing. He seems to be in control of it. He's going back in time and not, but this is just in his memory. But he does teleport there. But this is this teleportation actually makes sense. And he does some satanic ritual and does like the pentagram on his chest. Okay, cool. So now it's Son of Satan. Oh, the, yeah. And he does some kind of a summoning circle thing. I'm not going to say who appears at the end, but I will say that it goes on to, it's going to be an X-Men book next. Weird stuff. I don't like the idea that that this turns into more of a mysticism thing than anything else. It's supposed to be a super soldier serum. And if you brought mysticism in, also cool, but like a deal with the devil and archaic forces and stuff like that. Uh, not just archaic, but arcanic forces. <sighs> yeah, it's a weird story. Look, I enjoyed this. I know it sounds weird, but I did enjoy this. This was a good story. But it's missing all the key ingredients of a comic book franchise, namely editor's notes stating which book came before this. And, you know, that would be in the foreword, especially if it was of a different title. There, it should state what just happened recently. And we didn't really get too much of that in the previous one. Like, where's this coming from? This is the problem with just having some of the, the Amazing Spider-Man, Curse of the Man thing. I saw this book. I didn't see any of the other books. Apparently there were three other books before it. I didn't see any of them. Marvel is doing things. Weird things sometimes. This is apparently the 50th anniversary of the Man Thing character. Cool. So here's the question. Here's the most important question. And this is the question that I had when I picked the book up. I said, did somebody say we need to make this book because there's a 50th anniversary issue? Or did somebody else say, hey, I've got a great idea for the man thing. And then somebody else said, well, we've got the 50th anniversary coming up, so that's just perfect. You don't tell a story just because there's an anniversary coming up. Rather, you tell a story because you have a story to tell. And if there's a character that just hasn't been doing well, then, you know, this is this is that typical Marvel thing that they've been doing a couple of times. They did it with um uh they do it with Storm. Who the hell did they do it with? I don't even remember anymore. Nedia Corfor did a thing and this was a Marvel call, obviously. We'll call it oh, the world of Wakanda or something with Wakanda. And they would always have a different title on top. Spider Man was one of them, X Men was another, I think the Avengers were another, I don't remember. I don't remember but it's hard to find the title. <sighs> it's these little things that are such a simple solution, and you sit back and you wonder, who was the person who made such a blundering, dumb move like this? And what was the purpose of it? And why? Why? Just why? This is such a simple fix. This is the easiest fix in the world. This is the simplest thing in the world. Tell me the title on the top. If your character is not strong enough for that title to be something special, well, then you don't need to be telling that story. It's as simple as that. If you don't have faith in the character, then you don't tell the story. You simply don't. It's dumb to put Amazing Spider-Man on top of Curse of the Man thing. Really dumb thing to do for the comic. I'm not going to buy the trade paperback. You couldn't make me buy the trade paperback. Maybe I'll go and check it out on the Marvel Unlimited app. But for now, this is just more frustrating than anything else. That I bought this comic thinking, because what's the biggest dumb, dumb thing they did? And I'm sure they did this on purpose. If this is chapter four, why does it say issue number one on top? These are those things that Marvel does. It's deceitful. It's extremely deceitful. And right now, I feel got. I feel like I've just been taken advantage of. Marvel, quick question. Do you think that's a good feeling for someone to have? Literally figuring this stuff out while I'm doing my review. And I'm just going to sit here and chill out and keep my composure. But 
you screwed up big time on this one, Marvel. This is just one of those little things where, you know, a man, and when I say a man, I don't just mean someone with a dingling. I, I mean human kind. A man really only has his word in life. And when you come out and you do something as deceitful as this, whether intentional or by complete lack of competence, you know, I... I work, I'm, I, I really should be studying because I got my final on this. I've already passed the class, but I've, I'm working on doing my license um, schedule this Monday to take my licensure exam. Um, this determines whether I'm allowed to practice or not. It's like taking the bar for a very specific portion of the law. <laughs> you know, if you misrepresent something or if, if at any moment I show myself to be incompetent or any slight moment of incompetence while I'm defending a client, I could actually lose my license. If I show that I don't know what I'm doing or that I showed any form of deceit, whether intentional or otherwise, I can lose my license, a license that I don't even have yet. But it's important to understand that as you're going for your licensure, it's important to understand that as you're practicing using your license, all the money and all the time that I have spent in six months of intensive study, this is a seriously advanced class. 18 months is how long you're supposed to be able to do the class, or uh, the classes to learn immigration law up here in Canada. But I was able to put it together in only six months because I was devoted AF. And one of the most important aspects here is you will lose forever your license if you show incompetence while doing what you do. Marvel, however, they seem to get away with it. They're like, what are you going to do about it? And they're just a little guy that I could just be like, punk? But there's big, this big gigantic mouse behind them, you know, Mickey. And he's all like, what you guys say about my little brother? No beef. <laughs> but Marvel, you really just pulled a, pulled a toady move right now. That's some crap. Amazing Spider-Man, Curse of the Man-Thing, issue number one. Open it up. This is actually the fourth part. Go back and get all the other stuff and make sure you get all the other stuff also. Even though it just says number one on here. And we had no intention of there being a number two, per se. <sighs> All we have in our life is our word. That's it. And Marvel, I don't trust your word. Other than that, it's a good book. And I'd love to have been able to praise this book. I'd love to be able to just simply say, this was really good. I'd love to be able to say, this is the fourth issue of the fourth book that I've read of Curse of the Man Thing, featuring all these other characters. Marvel back in the day, under Shooter, under whatever. Marvel Team Up, featuring Spider-Man and this other character, and this other character, and in issue three, this character, and issue four with this character. Hey, Marvel 2 and 1 featuring the thing, plus this character, and in issue two, this character, issue three, this character. You can always tell, Marvel 2 and 1, the numbers change. They, uh, what do you call it? chronologically, they moved. Issue 1, 2, 3, 4, right? There was honesty back in the day. Nowadays, nah, man, put this cool character up there that's only going to be in there for a quick moment and do pretty much nothing. But make sure you do that because we can't be selling a man thing book. I mean, man thing sucks. I mean, why are you making the book? Yeah, I said what I said, and I'm out. Like the video if you enjoy honesty and people calling out dishonesty, and uh, watch an ad if you want to support honesty and people calling out incompetence. Class dismissed.